Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're going to be talking about this, the Lama Especial 380 semi-automatic pistol. Before we get into that, I'd like to shout out to my Patreon supporters. Um, you are invaluable in helping to make this happen. Everything costs money, guns, ammo, everything. So uh, your help is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to join them in supporting me, there's a link below in the description. So, on with it. My first exposure to the Lama Especial 380 um, came when I was a teenager because a friend of mine's dad had one from, it was his backup gun when he was a police officer, and it was the first semi-automatic pistol I ever got to examine in reasonable detail and actually figure out how they work. Because before that, it was, you know, all kind of a mystery to me. <laughs> so, um... You know, I was very familiar with BB guns and air guns of various types, and revolvers are pretty self-explanatory. But the whole slide moving back and forth, picking up cartridges, and, you know, all that stuff was new to me. So, the Lama Especial was introduced in 1956, and um, it is a 7.8 scale, 1911, with very few exceptions, uh, chamber for 380 ACP, and these were reasonably popular. Um, they work reasonably well with ball ammunition. I have heard, but cannot cite experience, that they do not like or do well with hollow points. And I can believe it. Uh, this one, I had a malfunction or two, which I suspect is a function of something going on with the magazine. But it was a very pleasant gun to shoot and quite reasonably accurate for its purpose. Um, I rather enjoyed it. And unlike a lot of 380s in this size, it is not excessively snappy because it uses a 1911 style locked breech, which takes a lot of the sting out of recoil. And it even mimics the form of the magwell housing and the hammer and everything. And I will say that like a government model 1911, the miniature 1911 had miniature hammer bite um, on my big fat hands, but it wasn't bad. It didn't actually break the skin, but I felt it every time I fired it. So if you have similarly large hands, it's something to be aware of. Has a vented rib on the top for no reason I can determine. Uh, sights are decent for a what it is, which is a small concealed carry pistol, and I had no trouble attaining acceptable accuracy with it. So let's go to the tabletop and see just how much of a miniature 1911 this is. The Lama Especial is really quite petite. It's about four and a half inches tall and about six and a half inches long. It is, of course, heavy because it's a steel frame gun, because that's how they rolled in 1954. Um, everything operates exactly as you would expect on a 1911. Magazine holds seven rounds, so you have a seven plus one capacity. The trigger is single action. Rattles quite a bit, but the barrel stays tight in relation to the slide of sight. So, you know, that doesn't seem to affect accuracy at all. Trigger pull has a bit of take up. And then brakes nice and crisp, but it's heavy. It's about eight and a half pounds, which I have to confess, I really did not notice when I was shooting it. Reset is 1911 short and crisp. Very nice. Uh, takedown is exactly like a 1911. You push in the recoil cap, rotate the bushing, and do not release the recoil cap, because unlike on the Colts, there is no little thing here to engage with the spring and keep it in place. It will shoot across the room. And after that, it's simply a matter of lining up the notches, popping out the slide stop, and running the slide forward off the frame. And you can see it has the partial recoil guide rod, very like a conventional 1911. It has, let's remove the bushing, which removes like a 1911. And you can see they actually even kept the falling link mechanism 
and dual locking lugs of the 1911. And um, it does have one little difference on reassembly than the 1911, which is that you don't want this spring coming off the guide rod when you reassemble it, because if you do, the guide rod will tilt and the spring will go next to it instead of over it, and you'll get the gun back together and everything will be jammed up solid. Oh, and you do want to put the bushing on before you insert that, because it will make life difficult if you don't have the bushing in place. So, a little fumbling. I'm not super familiar with this gun. And let's push this back on. Get everything lined up nicely. Insert the slide stop. Get it back in place without producing the dummy mark on the frame. And then reinsert the recoil plug. Now, again, be careful. This will launch itself. Uh, and it will and it will launch itself a surprising distance. And I'm going to use a pin to push this down far enough because that seems to work better. There we go. And we are back up and running. I will say that one of the things that they did not miniaturize much was this safety because it's a nice handy size and it's a great place to put your thumb, just like on the 1911, when you're ready to go. The grips are just walnut checkered, nice enough, nothing special or fancy. And I have to say the overall fit and finish and build quality of this particular gun is quite good. Uh, really nothing lacking there. So it's a nice little gun, very pleasant to fire, and um, quite accurate for what it is. The Especial did go through some changes over the course of its lifespan. Um, after the Gun Control Act of 1968, they had to replace the nice grips with target grips. Anyway, um, production was discontinued in 1996. And in 1997, they reintroduced it with an ambidextrous safety and niftier plastic grips and called it the Minimax. And these were imported by Stoger. And um, those kept going until 2005 when the Spanish government basically shut down their gun industry. So, had a good long run and they were moderately popular. You can still find them quite often on Gunbroker, usually between three and four hundred and fifty dollars. Although you do have the occasional rabid optimist putting them up for stupid money, um, and um, unfortunately, the only readily available magazines are from Triple K, so you may or may not be able to make them function in the gun. But uh, yeah, I like it, and it's a little bit of a throwback to my misspent youth. So, if you liked the video, and if you're still watching, I suspect you did, please hit like. It helps YouTube know that people are watching so that they'll spread my video around and more people will see them, and that helps the channel. So, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.